Hello and welcome to Phuket Pulse GED Express screencast with Teacher Alex. Today's lesson focuses on GED Science, uh, past paper lesson number three. So we will continue with our last paper we started um, with question number five. Okay, um, the food web below illustrates the consumption of food in a typical prairie or grassland setting. The food web begins with the grass being eaten by both herbivores, plant eaters, and omnivores, both meat and plant eaters, and continues to the carnivores, the meat eaters. Okay, and we get to see the graphic of the food web. So what we see here is um, the interaction between organisms and who provides who with food energy, basically. So the arrows indicate where or in which direction energy in the form of food is flowing. So if we look at that here, grasses and grains in the producer section or vegetables or shrubs are eaten by squirrels, vegetables by squirrels, rabbits, here rabbits as well, shrubs eaten by rabbits, insects. So we can see here that the food web is or has four sections. Uh, the first sections section the producers, which uh, is it referred to up here? Okay, it begins with the grass being eaten by both herbivores and omnivores. So grass is a form of producer, producer in the sense of it produces food only with the help of sunlight and yeah, water and gases from the atmosphere. So the producers um, are the organisms which are able to do photosynthesis and fix um, <coughs> energy. And this is then consumed by the primary consumers, so the first level which feeds on the producers. And we have the secondary consumers which feed on the primary consumers and the tertiary consumers which feed on the secondary consumers, at least at one secondary consumer or probably as well as we can see here possible on a primary concern. Which statement below is the best conclusion about the food web diagram? The snake consumes the grass. Let's have a look. The snake is here. It consumes squirrels, rabbits, insects. No grass. The hog consumes several different animals. Well, squirrels, insect-eating birds, snakes, shrews. So definitely a couple of different animals. So have a look at the others. The squirrel, uh, the rabbit, is consumed by the squirrel. This would mean that there would should be a an arrow from here to here. There is not, so this is wrong. The insect is consumed by the hawk. Insect here, no arrow to the hawk. The food web begins with the squirrels. Well, the food web begins with the producers, with the plants. So the right answer is number two. The hawk consumes several different animals. Okay, let's go to the next question. So, question number six. Every moving object moves at a certain distance in a particular period 
of time. Dividing this distance by the time elapsed gives the speed of an object. Velocity describes both the speed and the direction in which the object is traveling. Acceleration is a change in velocity. So in this small paragraph here we get a lot of information about speed, how it is defined, about velocity, what velocity is and defined, and about acceleration, what acceleration is. So let's have a close look again. Speed is distance divided by time elapsed. Velocity of an object is both speed and the direction, so speed in a specific direction, it's a vector. And acceleration is a change in velocity, so speeding up or slowing down. Let's have a look at the graph, changes in velocity. So the graph, the combination or the information we get here is that the combination of both y and x-axis will give us the acceleration of an object. We have change in velocity. So on the y-axis we have the velocity in meters per second. So again speed is distance divided by time elapsed. Same velocity, just that velocity has a specific direction. And on the x-axis we have the time in minutes. During which, or let's have a look at the graph first. So we can see that in the first 10 minutes that there is a change in velocity from zero to 20 meters per second. So we have a positive acceleration. The object speeds up. From A to B we as well have a positive acceleration. The object speeds further up to around 50 meters per second. Then from 20 to 30 minutes the object still moves, we have meters per second here, at 50 meters per second with a constant speed. So we have no acceleration, we have no change in velocity or no change in speed. So the object travels at a constant speed. From minute 30 to 40 we again have acceleration to 90 meters per second. And then from D to E we again have acceleration from 90 to 100 meters per second. Okay, let's have a look. During which time interval is the object not accelerating? Well, A to B, we just had that, nope. B to C, yes, we have no change in velocity, so we have no acceleration. The object travels at a constant speed and doesn't change its speed or velocity. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much and if you'd like to know more about Phuket Pulse, yeah, see our Facebook page or call us as you can see here the number 081417 0978. Thank you for listening and see you next time.